matchups for this afternoon's matchup. Cooney, who's got to shoot well. Malachi Richardson's a freshman of influence with Minna J. Roberson and Juan Coleman. They're happy to have him back. L.J. Peek, Devontae Smith-Rivera, Copeland, Marcus Derrickson, and a, a little bit of help coming in that starting five from Bradley Hayes, a big man that has really come on strong for Georgetown in the opening tap is controlled to the cues. Our officials at Corbett, Les Jones and Mike Stevens. First possession for Syracuse, interesting to see if they're going to try to get the ball inside into the basket or settle for an outside jump shot. Benajé, got his man airborne and picks up the foul. LJ Peak as a zero on zero in that situation, picks up the foul. All right, that's an example right there of Benajé using the experience, getting to a spot, using a little hesitation, head fake, and getting LJ Peak in the air and drawing contact. Again, the fifth-year senior, that's what experience gives you. John Thompson, the third. Already getting grief from his father about that tough non-conference schedule to open. Uh, you know, you got to play the game. It was the, the ACC uh, big, uh, big Ten Challenge. You had to play Maryland. Well, here's, here's the, thing about it. The, the beauty of it is, one, you didn't have yeah. you know, two of your key players in Paul White and Trey Campbell, but you played close. Yeah. Those games build character for later on in the season. Now, the Radford loss was difficult, yes. obviously. That's a that's a tough loss that will affect their RPI. But, yeah, I, I think you're right. We, this team is much better than their 3-3 three three record coming out. Much better. This is a great test for them right now, attacking this Syracuse zone. Peak off the drive and draw from DSR knocks down the train. It's 3-2 Hoyas. And that's the value of penetrating deep within the zone. Once you suck it in, now you keep your spacing. Peak able to catch and shoot in rhythm. Easy for the Syracuse team. You really didn't talk about them from the national perspective. And sometimes that's good. So because now guys can fly to the radar, do what they need to do. I think they showed well. In the battle for Lance, because when they shot the ball extremely well, right. kind of showed us a new Syracuse, a new and improved. Not tough loss against Wisconsin. Wisconsin was always tough on the road, but you learn from those type of yeah. experiences, and uh, we'll see if that learning pays off on the road against this Georgetown team today. Good wins against UConn and Texas A&M yes. in the battle for Atlantis. And uh, even though Wisconsin's lost a lot of talent, you know they're tough. There's Hayes, and this kid has come out of nowhere giving quality minutes. He's already scored more this season than he has in his entire career coming in. Watch his speed inside, Jimmy. He is pretty special. Well, I think he, Hayes understands now what his role is on the team. He's not trying to do too much of things that he can't do. You cut off the baseline right exactly. there for Cooney. So, back on the deck. Who just joined us, Jim Beheim, beginning a nine-game suspension by virtue of the appeals process. Syracuse did get some of its scholarships back, and that's good news. Jim has already announced that after three years he'll be done, and Mike Hopkins will take over. Mike will be coaching really all the way until the North Carolina game when Jim will reemerge on the sidelines. And there's a foul that's spotted on the runout by Paul White. In front of the National Archives, get your skates ready. Coaches always preach this. When you get the ball, make a quick decision. If you don't have a shot, you make a pass and you move. If you don't, this long zone defense, as we've seen in the past, will cause a lot of headaches for opposing teams. Well, we talked about Benajé being important. Wyden is also an outstanding three-point shooter. 50% on the season coming in. Howard has checked in also for Syracuse. they got to find a way to play Grano from downtown. Benajé lost it on the way in. Stripped. Johnson was over there to help convert Caleb Johnson to knock it away. 14 on the shot clock. Well, I think what I think it helped with Syracuse is the ability for them to also move the basketball, get into the gap, force, force Georgetown to have to help. And that's when you have those drive and kick opportunities that we saw from Syracuse early on in their last few games. Just six points in the last eight minutes for the Orange. And they trail by 14. Malachi Richardson. Can't get it to go, but an offensive rebound leads to Benajé for three. And the 0 for continues. It's now 0 for 6 for the Cues. Well, it seems like also Cues is taking a lot of these shots under duress, where Georgetown is in free movement, flowing, 
offense allowing him to get high percentage shots. There's a deflection out of the zone, and that's what you're accustomed to seeing Syracuse yes. do. Be active with their hands. Richardson can't hit the three, drive it inside. And Roberson will be guilty going in over the back for that offensive rebound. Tyler's got two now, as you look at Mike Hopkins, a part of that team, late 80s, early 90s, when they were recruiting the likes of you. He was a part of it. Adrian Autry also on that club. He's talking to a walk-on, Steve Keating, who was with that team, who's here in business mm -hmm. and sitting right behind us, and he said, gosh, he had a motor. As a as a player and as a leader, he, had, he, he knew he had the motor to become a coach one day. Well, he's there. He's intense. He understands the gravity of this moment, but I think him being calmer, I think he settled his young man down. Now, they, they just have to figure out a way defensively to take away these easy baskets, but offensively Get into a rhythm. Yeah. Smith Rivera with time winding down. Triggers it. Johnson can't get it to go. And a break opportunity for Cooney. Look at the transition by Georgetown. Excellent defensive position early on for Georgetown. They negate what could have been a fast break opportunity for the Orange Bowl. And you would have thought for a moment there they were going to get an easy basket. But Georgetown just got back there and grows. Shot clock under 10. It just seems like help is everywhere for Georgetown. That's Cooney's spot, and he finally puts one in. One of eight now, Syracuse, but that could be ominous. Remember when that bucket went down for Cooney and for Syracuse. What excellent job of Cooney relocating to the open area to get that shot. Hayes. Well, I'll tell you, call it smoke and mirrors if you want, coach, but this gets pretty good. What? But also, there's an easy pass inside. It posts up right in the middle of the lane. Nice little jump hook inside from Hayes. No hesitation either at no. all. Every shot is a tough one. Roberson takes it inside. 28-17 the score as Syracuse looks to warm up. Well, you notice the last two possessions for Syracuse, you have more player movement, body movement, and ball movement, able to get the kind of shots that you want. White. For three. Kick out. Roberson had it. Lost it. And on the retrieval, a quick reach-in foul, which will go against Caleb Jackson, the freshman from Martinsville, Virginia, and Carlisle High School. Uh, just a little something simple, but knowing your teammate, Benajay out to Cooney, knowing exactly where you're going to be, and that's never giving up on the play. Well, you see where the points come from this season, and uh, clearly when you're one out of eight, you're in trouble. And they are simply trying to maintain position now and hope to get that fluidity you were talking about. And sometimes it just takes one to go down. It does. It, it's all about a game of rhythm. If you get rhythm jump shots, now you're able to get back into it. But that's the state of college basketball in the NBA is that you need to be able to shoot the three. Benajay, not there. Roberson, a rare offensive rebound and fouled by Hayes. And how about Syracuse taking a page out of Georgetown book? In regards to offensive rebounds off of a long shot, giving yourself an opportunity to score or, as you see Roberson, able to get to the free throw line. That's one of the few times you'll see Bradley Hayes give a position yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a very rare that he would, because he's a position basketball player in the pivot. He, he Ball fakes don't normally get to him like that. At that time, I think because of the shot, it got buried under the rim a little bit more than he wanted to. Roberson was able to use his body to kind of carry him the rebound in. An excellent use of this body to draw contact on Hayes for the follow-up. A nine-point game. Georgetown with control. But doesn't it seem like Georgetown would be up 15 oh, yeah. right now? It, it, it has that feel. So Syracuse has done a good job of keeping this lead below double digits to give themselves a shot before the half end. Yeah, trying to survive to the break. That's sort of where they are. Derrickson rattles at home. Brewster Academy, Bowie, Maryland, the freshman of some influence, 31 to 19. At that time, Tyler Rogerson overplayed that position, went for the steal, which opened up the jump shot on the wing. Benajay, good bounce pass delivery to Roberson. Oh, I love the two-man game. That time you emptied out the corner. You forced the help on the opposite side. Excellent pocket pass inside. You can't get an easier two than that for Roberson. Oh, he's... 
Able to finally get into the scoring column, make something happen. You can see the athleticism that Roberson brings. But it was a quick hitting play. And that time it allowed him to have the weak side three because they didn't hesitate on execution. Well, he's got the last six Syracuse points. Campbell. That's an air ball. And the Orange take over. Fox College Hoops is sponsored by Cialis. And you look at the story in Bradley Hayes and Roberson. Hayes, a veteran, but a guy that's just gotten on the scene offensively. And Roberson, as we mentioned, a freshman help from Tyler London is needed. The junior, Roberson, has been a difference maker that's kept Syracuse in this game to this point. Well, it's a difference when you accept your role, Tim, and, and do what you're supposed to do, how it benefits not only yourself, but your team. Nice play by Benajay getting into the passing lane, and the Warriors begin with a turnover. And that's the one I talked about. It seems like you're going to be open at times, or a pass is there, then that quick rotation by the long arms of Syracuse turns into what could have been a shot into a steal. Nice cut. Coleman takes it in. And it goes the other way. Player control foul for Coleman as he ducked that shoulder in there and picks up his second foul. Well, this is an excellent two-man game on the weak side. Again, pocket pass inside, but the rotation was there. Yep. And give a lot of credit to Georgetown defense, which you don't stay on one side of the court. When the ball shifts, you shift. Well, Coleman is not a high riser, but he is physical, and they need that physical presence. Smith Rivera looking for a pick, could not get it. There's Coleman on the wing. He is an outstanding wing shooter and knows how to take big time shots. He did it to Butler a year ago. Copeland was the recipient of an open shot, but give again Georgetown a lot of credit. The ball is hopping on the perimeter. No one is holding on the ball like a hot potato. They're holding on to it like a hot potato, getting rid of it early. Largest lead of the day. It's up to 15. Syracuse needs an answer. There's a steal by Copeland. Any indecision, and the Hoyas will swat it away. Coleman has to understand that this aggressive Georgetown defense is swarming. You have to have eyes in the back of your head. If not, as a result, you turn into a turnover and an opportunity for Georgetown on the opposite end. Well, the last two possessions, the Orange have turned it over. Copeland is feeling it now. Too strong with the clock winding down. Derrickson with a follow. The little things that Derrickson is bringing to the table. We saw it on the defensive end of the board, and now offensively sliding that big body underneath to get an easy put back for Georgetown. Malachi Richardson gets the job done, taking it inside. The contact again with an offensive foul, says Leslie Jones. Wave it who, off. And guess who was back in the play? Derrickson was inside. Again, anticipating the drive to the basket, feet set, body, arms in the air. And these are the little things that defensively, offensively, we talked about playing your role and knowing who you are as a player. Prime example with Derrickson in the last two or three plays. Well, that's three trips and three turns for Syracuse. What's that old saying about the lost start? You know, you got to sometimes pull up and take on. Why not? You're feeling it. The teammates are cheering you on. Look at the smile on his face right now. The lead has ballooned to 20. Roberson misses a dunk. Tooney pulls up. That's going to be a block. Copeland went over there with the hopes that Cooney would take it to the rack, but Trevor was smart enough to angle away from that, and Hopkins looks on. Very difficult set of circumstances for Mike, longtime assistant, associate head coach, and future head coach for Jim Beheim's program, and the Hall of Famer is back home, and if you saw the pregame show, you caught my interview with him. When I mentioned last conversations with Jim, he... He, he welled up. I mean, his eyes were, he was clearly emotional about the set of circumstances that he faced this week. He, he was prepared to take over, but not now. I think he really felt that this game, Jim Beheim would be with him. Well, it feels like a conference game. Yeah. You know, it feels like that. So the magnitude of this 
rivalry is unlike any other that Hopkins could come into. So, yeah, it's going to be emotional. He played it and he understands it. And with Jim not being on the sideline, you kind of catapult it into a situation where your team struggled against Wisconsin. Now you're going to come back on the road against a tough Georgetown team. And don't let that calm demeanor that you see oh, from no. him. You know, no. when you're the assistant coach, there's a, a body language that you must have, particularly when Jim is the leader. But he is as competitive, one of the most competitive players that Bayhan ever had on his team. And he was on some great basketball teams at Syracuse. Well, that's the reason why he's Jim, Coach Bayhan's number one. That, that's the reason why. Pete for three. Too strong, taken down by Roberson. And this is where Syracuse has to take advantage, get out of transition. Richardson going reversal in his foul. Finally, Syracuse able to, one, get a defensive stop. Now get out of transition. Transition. Use that athleticism to beat Georgetown down the court and try to get to the basket, get some momentum going. Excellent job that time by Cuse. Derrickson got the foul, his second. You know, he had the Derrickson really had his coming out party in that Maryland game. He had 21. And we know how good the Terps are. He, he carried them in that game. And I, I'm going to tell you, one of the reasons I felt Georgetown would have a good season was on the basis of that performance against Maryland. Well, keep I it sent a message to me. Well, keep in mind this. With Derrickson having 21, how many plays you really think were ran ex exclusively yeah. for him? Right. You don't need to run play through because he has an understanding of how to get his offense within the offense. The lead is 18. Three and a half minutes gone by. Hayes was impacted but stays with it. And again, round and round and in. Listen, the simple plays a lot of times, yeah, you throw an air ball up, but when the ball bounces your way, it has the tendency to come back to you. Hayes that time stayed with it, and the reaction tells you a lot about how much this game means. Not only from an individual perspective, but for Georgetown as a whole. We're talking about a kid that only played in 17 games a year ago. But in the opening round of the NCAAs against Eastern Washington, the switch went on, and it's carried through to this season for him. And you never know when that switch is going to turn on, but Coach Thompson, you're glad it did. Not much help from downtown from either Richardson or Lydon today. They've been shut down. 47 to 26. Syracuse is two for 14 from three point range. That stat alone tells you why they're down by this much. Nice deflection by Lighton. And another one from Smith Rivera tries to save it. Syracuse comes away with it. Syracuse would have to do a better job of not settling for jump shots. I thought when he kind of got into a rhythm, he really attacked his Georgetown defense off swings and off the dribble. Finish it! Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he just pulled Jimmy Jackson. Yeah, that's right. Just, uh, that's right. Well, sit over here and be quiet. <laughs> Allow me to uh, reintroduce myself, so to speak. But I remember, I remember when you were playing, Jim would be down on the block saying, give it to me. Give it to me. He was open something. <laughs> 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 Pete in traffic stays with it. Tipped in by Hayes. The kid is everywhere. Three offensive rebounds for Georgetown. That's unacceptable. Give my coach Mike Hopkins. Lighten. Too strong. Just not in rhythm today. There will be another day for that freshman. But a freshman and a senior, but a new kid on the block, so to speak, in Hayes. Samino, uh, even Patino and Carlissimo, when they came into the right, league, Hall, it right. was about the love-hate you know, that made the league so special. I grew up a Big East fan. Yeah. I mean, watching the game. I still have VHS tape for St. John's <laughs> and Syracuse in the Big East championship. And, and that's what... 
I got my love for basketball by watching these teams battle. Line nice dish to Coleman. Boy, that was Sunday best variety. The best, as I said, going to break. Yet to come from this freshman, Tyler Lighton. But you, you like the fact that out of the timeout, Syracuse is able not only to execute the play they drew up, but get a score out of it. What, what did they do? Come into the basket. Hayes. Boy, he can just wait for that delivery. High low from Cameron. Hayes again, the recipient, but again, excellent high low, excellent passing on time on target by Georgetown. Lighton now into some rhythm. This kid can really pump it. Look out if he gets warm. Beautiful stroke. But I love that he didn't lose his confidence in regards to not playing well and then shying away from taking that open shot. Hopkins is really high on the youngster. As he should be. Cameron with a good find. Anytime you find Smith Rivera, not there. Tap out. Taken by Franklin Howard. End to end. Wave it off. Foul will be spotted. It is a block prior to the shot against Peak. What happens once again, I talked about in long shots, especially from the corner. A long, it allows a long rebound. Now Syracuse able to get out. Now, George Sam on that particular occasion did a poor job in transition of stopping the ball early right now. DSR kind of pointing. So now you're able to give a little bit more momentum the offensive player to get to the basket. Howard, by the way, played at Paul the sixth in Fairfax, Virginia. So just a little bit of a homecoming for him in the game. There's Lighton again from downtown. All right, the garbage is picked up by Howard, and the home spun star gets one in, 51-36. A little momentum creeping to the side of Syracuse, the last few possessions. The bounce is in their step defensively. That's where it all starts, right there. First pass to Copeland, and if he doesn't nail it, you got Hayes down there to pick up either a pass or an offensive rebound. But it was a quick decision. Once he caught the ball, he turned, squared up, identified where the rim was at, and went right into a shot. Tough shot for Howard in traffic. But Leslie Jones spots a foul. It'll go against Smith Rivera with an arm bar. JT3 disagrees. It's all about quick decisions here. An excellent pass inside. As soon as he bounces on the floor, turns and shoots, that allow, that doesn't allow the defense now to react to the pass in order to recover quick enough to get a deflection. It's rare that you see a Coach K transfer do so at all. In his case, he did it comfortably. And the relationship, of course, with Jim and, and Mike is so very close, having Jim on the... U.S. Olympic team staff for so long, and Hopkins is part of that staff right, as right. well. One of the reasons why that was such a comfortable transfer for the young man from Richmond, Virginia. Trevor Cooney picks up his fourth foul there, and Smith Rivera gets to the free throw line. And I think it, what gets lost in all the competition a lot of times is that the closeness and the relationship that these coaches have. And I'm sure there's a conversation in there somewhere to say, hey, listen, it may be a better fit over here. Jim, what do you think? Mike, what do you think? And now that allowed the transition for Benajay to get there and really fit within this program. Well, you remember the kind of team they had at Duke at that time. It was well, just hard for a, a guy that could handle it and score it to have room on that roster at that time. Right. It turned out to be a win-win. Indeed. 60 to 46. Smith Rivera shadowing Benajay off the ball. Trying to run through screens along that baseline. Lydon. Good ball fake and delivery. Coleman could not convert it. That was a beautiful pass from Lydon. And I'm going to say this about the Syracuse offense. That time Howard with a little penetration on the weak side. Sucked into defense over to Lydon. Pump fake. And now inside to Coleman. As a result, you get a chance to get to the basket. And again, it was constant movement by Syracuse that opened up the lane for Coleman. Now, we would love for him to have to finish that. But it was the execution that time by Syracuse is something that you just want to kind of take a snapshot of and duplicate. Well, he is hit. 
All of his free throws, they've only taken three with the addition of that one coming into today's game. He's a perfect 4-4 four four in the season at the line, and the lead remains 12. Trey Campbell checks in. L.J. Peak, who has four, sits down. This may be a nice finish. I'm anticipating this Syracuse it's run may not right. be done. The limit is him. It's 8.30 left in this game, yeah. and you know how quickly momentum can shift and change. All right. There's Smith. Oh, excuse me. Trying to say that. What was the announcer saying that? Oh, he said, pump your brakes right now. I've got this under control. But that's what seniors do. They understand time and moment, the gravity of the situation. Step up and make a big play. Howard, not this time. Coleman trying to stay with it down there with Hayes. Smith Rivera on the floor was on the inline. But, that, excuse me, that's Copeland that was on the floor getting himself up. And that time, Tim, Coleman didn't get the rebound, but because of his big body and activity, now he allows his team to get another possession. Malachi Richardson will trigger it in, the freshman from Trenton, New Jersey. Weak side to open Benajay for three. Copeland his spot. Not this time. Derrickson again. And guess who? Stripped this time by Richardson. The orange on the move. And they take advantage of the defensive stop on the opposite end. Benajay giving it up. Shot clock at 10. Coleman challenges Derrickson. This one will be a block. Fans wanted a player control foul. He went right at his chest. Strength up. Players understand, but keep yeah. in mind, for players in particular, they always think about the default mechanism is the way we get in the game or get rhythm is offensive. And the coach said, was like, no, you get stops first. Yeah. And then you worry about the offense. It doesn't, it doesn't do us any good if we can't get stopped and we get Syracuse opportunities to get back in this game. And Coleman remains perfect at the line and leaves as Roberson checks back in. He was talking about transition, too, because he understands that Syracuse wants to push it. And look at the pressure applied, being applied by Syracuse right now. And with a little full court pressure, but they break it. And how do you break it? You get the ball up quick and you pass through the pressure, not trying to beat a guy or the defense by yourself off the dribble. Paul White has checked into the game, number 13 in gray. Trey Campbell, Copeland, there's Hayes. You know what's going to happen next. He gets it. He's got the moves. That jump hook has been outstanding all season for him. He's got 17 on the day. And what Hayes provides you is a pressure release. We are not just relying on jump shots. You can get it down low and get easy baskets like that. Cooney for three. The lead back to single digits. Over six to play. And I'm George Shannon. Again, I'm going to work the ball around and see if I can get another touch inside to Hayes. And he doesn't necessarily have to shoot the basketball, but Syracuse now is going to honor his presence inside. White, what a pass! Oh, what a pass by White! And a foul, the end result. Malachi Richardson picks up the person in his second. And, and White does an excellent job of seeking out and finding the gap inside the zone. And the pocket pass inside for Hayes to just be able to catch, get up in rhythm, and draw contact. By the way, it's a good idea, generally, <laughs> to put this kid on the line. Right. Yeah, he's only about 60%, and he's been automatic. The thing I love about him, Jim, is that when he gets the ball, he doesn't mess around. No, he either passes it or he goes straight up. And give credit to the coaching staff here at Georgetown because if you notice, 
all the players make quick decisions once they get the ball in their hands. It's a shot. If I don't have it, it's a pass. Cooney off the curl, not there. Hayes with the rebound for Georgetown. Mentioned at the very open that he could be in for a double-double day. He's now got seven rebounds to go with all that point production of 17. Syracuse defense now is extending out a little bit more. We're going to have these passes that are available inside for Georgetown. Smith Rivera with the shot clock winding down. Forces one up, not here. Hayes again, wave it off. They're going to say the violation occurred. The clock had gone to the limit before Jonathan was able to put, uh, before Bradley was able to put it in. Yeah, DSR, a little frustrated that time. That's about the third time he's had to take yeah. a contested fourth shot at the end of the shot clock. He said, listen, you know, this is really kind of affected my <laughs> shooting percentage <laughs> on these kind of shots. Next time you take it. Spoken by a box score, well, you, you better believe it. <laughs> Don't throw it to me now. That's like two seconds left. <laughs> I'm going into the option here in my contract. That, that's right. What's going on? <laughs> Timeout with five remaining. And Georgetown leading by ten. I watched him on film. I said, this is the kid that played last year? Right. Well, he has really emerged. Well, that's part of player development. A lot of times, Tim, is not the physical, it's the mental part to leave that you can get it done. Baseline cut off. White working on Lydon. Shot clock at two. Howard's got a punt. Got off the back iron. Coleman saves it on a recycle. Key is here. You don't have to rush it for Syracuse. Get a high percentage shot. Get this lead under 10 points. Widen in traffic. Not there. Coleman on the offensive glass. Coleman again. The benefits of having a big body, a fresh body. Coleman also feels he has something to prove. That he has to prove to his coaching staff that he deserves to be on the court. You keep playing like this, those minutes will continue to add up. Yeah, and his opposition is playing very well on this end of the floor. Got to give it to the kid. Playing really on a leg and a half after rehabbing for 18 months. Benajay dogged by Smith Rivera. Cooney off the bounce. Not there. Look at Howard go after it. And a foul. Wave it off. Foul prior to the shot. 8 of 11 from the floor. 7 boards. Hayes picks up his foot. Being more aggressive to probe the defense to create opportunities for their teammates. Howard can't get it to go. And a quick foul will promenade to the other free throw line after that foul. Committed by Roberson, and that's his fourth. So not only unfortunate that Howard did not connect with the one and one but on top of that, it induces a fourth foul against Roberson. And that's what one of the Achilles heel of the Syracuse team against Wisconsin, not only the giving up the rebounding, but down the stretch of the game, the lack of knocking down free throws when, when the clock is stopped. Yeah, and that's got him in the double bonus, too. So, two shots here for Hayes. A remarkable performance for the Jacksonville leader. But what you love to see with Hayes is that you put in the work, and people they put in the work, it pays off. When you finally see it pay off. Now, this is only one game, but you're starting to see a trend with Hayes in his play and his confidence that can hold well for Georgetown. Howard rejected him. The ball will be theirs underneath their own hoop. And it's funny how when you roll it offensively, <laughs> your defense picks up, Jeff. Jay fouled by Peak. And that's his fifth. So that'll do it for LJ. He'll be the first that is uh, lost to foul difficulty. Trey Campbell will check in for him. And that's super bonus time for Benajay. He's at the line for two. 
players were unaware that they had gone into the Super Bonus. So he'll get a second but, shot. But a missed opportunity at the free throw line. The clock has stopped. In order to get momentum, in particular with Syracuse, you need to make this free throw. Now you can set your defense and set the pressure up and force Georgetown to have to beat that pressure. You never know. You get a turnover easy there. Set it again. And this time they're falling back, which is kind of surprising a little bit. Down 10. The three minutes kind of falling back into the zone instead of pressing up. That tells me they respect the ball handlers on the floor for Georgetown. That could be the case. Derrickson, high low again. Rejected by Lydon this time. Good recovery defense. Derrickson again. Lydon clears. Benajay. And I know Derrickson was open on that shot, but that's an opportunity for Georgetown to bring it back out and run some more time off the clock. Okay, Howard is looking down low for Coleman. He wasn't ready for that. I think he thought Howard was taking the shot, and it uh, turns into a turnover. Well, Howard would have benefited better to take the shot because now you have inside position of Coleman to possibly get an offensive rebound. Hopkins is asking them to pressure now, a trap, and they do. If he may have gotten it. That surprised the Hoyas a little. Howard does pick up his second foul. Well, the coaching staff is saying, don't catch the ball that deep on the sideline because now that sideline acts as a third defender because you don't have space right now to get the ball out and see Copeland right there kind of garnered inside. Luckily for Georgetown, Howard was so aggressive, he caused the contact, which ultimately got caught a foul. Yeah, he really bailed him out. Yes. That was a turnover waiting to happen. Campbell unable to convert. Talked about the youngster from right here in D.C., St. John's College High School. Really played his best at the close of last year. First bench points of this half for Georgetown. They pitched an 11 0 shutout in the first. Must make time now for Syracuse. Benajay stays with it. Derrickson pulls it down. Georgetown really closing down anytime Syracuse takes it to the rack. But it's a swarming defense, and this is something again that. Coach Thompson talked about for us being Georgetown, what we must do. We must be aggressive defensively without fouls. Derrickson will get to the free throw line. Well, I think about Jim Beheim at home and how <laughs> after a month of him, Julie's really going to have a rough time. <laughs> but it is a very difficult situation. You know for him, watching the guy that's so close to him, Mike Hopkins, trying to sweat this one out and know that he's got another month of this before he can get back on the sideline. Well, it's not like the National Basketball Association where the players can kind of run things like they do in a Golden State. It's yeah. so integral. You see the hustle right now by Georgetown. Cooney trying to stay with it. And we've got a kick that'll go the other way off the kick ball. Yeah. So is that Corbett? But, and I'm going to say, but Jim Beheim not being here, you miss a lot. Because yeah. in college, it's about the coach. And that's not taking anything from Mike Hop Hopkins and the coaching staff. But not having Jim Beheim on the sideline in critical situations that time because of his experience, yeah. you can't make that up. Well, the emotions we got from Hop were raw today in our interview prior to the game. Luke Cooney with a little pressure here against. There it is. Smith Rivera there there it gets is. a pick. Benajay got his man airborne. That'll be three. That'll be three from downtown. Smart play. Benajay and Cooney collaborating. There. And, and here's the question here, and a lot of people don't like this rule. Let's see if when Benajay, after the steal, if he's up in the air vertical, excellent hustle by Cooney getting his knees dirty right here. Fake. And that time up enough, but. DSR leans into the contest, which allows Benajay to ultimately pick up that foul. Ed Corbett and uh, Leslie Jones have gone over to check to see if it is a three, and it is. He leans in, yes, but the shot was being launched from downtown, and he was fouled behind the line, so he will get three free throws. And again, understanding time and score, 
But being in this situation before as a fifth-year senior, used the pump fake again, knowing that DSR was going to try to contest that shot. That big start to the second half, which got Georgetown the breathing room up to 20, really paying dividends in this stretch run as Syracuse began to warm up. That hole that they had dug was a little deeper after the first four minutes of the second half. Well, you knew Syracuse was going to make a, run, make a run, but the hardest thing to do when you have the lead is to play with the lead and keep that same intensity. Drew Campbell got to pick up a foul. That one was almost taken away by Cooney from the backside, but yet another foul on a reach against Syracuse. And Devontae Smith Rivera is talking to Campbell about, yeah, you got fouled, but the smarter ways to break the press. Right. And you're going to play into the hands of Syracuse to be able to knock the ball from behind, slap down. If they play physical, you beat the press over the top. That time Campbell was fortunate to get away with it. Malachi Richardson got the foul, his third. Cooney almost had the turnover in hand right about the time the foul was committed. He gets one of the two. The lead is 10. Quick push. See if you get a high quality shot. Score gets your defense set up to Syracuse. Cooney for three. Not there. An excellent box out that time by four players at Georgetown. Uh, he, he may be short, but he's got broad shoulders. And that time, Ed Corbett saw them come in an offensive foul. And that time with Tony, childhood friends <laughs> competing right now. And Smith Rivera extended that chicken wing a yeah, little too much in front of the official. An easy call inside. And you see it right here. Watch the right arm yeah, push off. And, yeah. and Cooney, Cooney sold, it. sold it. Yes, he did. Uh, you know, he sold it. But again, 